Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the draw tight trailer hitch receiver here on a 2022 Honda Accord. So adding a trailer hitch to your Accord, it's going to be an excellent option because it's going to make your vehicle that much more versatile. Now, in addition to using the trailer hitch for towing, we could also use it for other accessories like a hitch mounted bike rack if we wanted to hit the trails or a simple cargo carrier if we needed to free up some space inside the vehicle for us and the family on those long road trips. And here's what our trailer hitch is going to look like installed on the vehicle here. Now it does have a hidden cross tube design, meaning everything is actually going to be tucked up behind the bumper here. The only thing we can see is the actual receiver tube and our hitch has a black powder coated finish that draw tight uses on all of their hitches. Now in regards to towing, our trailer hitch is going to provide us with a 2000 pound gross trailer weight rating. That's the amount we can pull outward and it has a 200 pound tongue weight rating as well, which is the downward force on the receiver tube. Now keep in mind, these capacities are for the hitch only, which is tested separately of the vehicle. Therefore, you do need to verify your vehicle's towing capacity in your owner's manual and abide by the lower of the two rated components. The opening size of our receiver tube is an industry standard one and a quarter inch by one and a quarter inch, which is gonna allow you with plenty of bike rack and cargo carrier options to choose from. Now on the side of the receiver tube, we're gonna have our standard half inch diameter hitch pin hole. So keep in mind, your hitch pin does not actually come with the trailer hitch. And the reason for that is a lot of your aftermarket accessories are actually going to come with their own. So you shouldn't need to worry about buying this separately. But if you do need one, we have plenty of options. And then on the bottom of the receiver tube, we have our safety chain loops. Those are going to work great with both the clevis and the S style hooks. And just a couple quick measurements for you guys that are going to help you when you're selecting your hitch mounted accessories. We have the distance from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube. You're looking at right about 12 inches there and that'll be useful when you're selecting a ball mount so you can make sure you get the correct rise and drop to tow your trailer level. And then we have the distance from the center of the hitch pin hole to the outside edge of the bumper. And for this one here, you're looking right about three inches and that'll be useful when you're selecting your folding accessory so you can make sure that while they're in the folded up and stowed position, they don't contact the vehicle. So in regards to installation, this hitch is very straightforward to put on. There's not any modifying to the vehicle whatsoever, which is great as well. Now keep in mind, you do have to remove the rear bumper fascia, and I know that may scare a lot of you guys away, but on this vehicle, it is very easy. And thankfully, we're gonna walk you through this entire process step by step. Now, keep in mind, we will be doing this installation on a lift, but this one's actually pretty easy to do on the ground at home. In fact, it's actually gonna be easier because you're not gonna be lifting as high. Let's go ahead and show you this now. The first step of our installation is gonna be underneath the vehicle today. We're gonna be removing some push pin fasteners. So we're gonna have two on either side. We're gonna have one here, and then one back here just directly behind the wheel. Now in order to get these out, it's pretty easy. We're gonna take a flathead screwdriver and pry that center section out, and then you should just be able to pull down to get it the rest of the way out. So we've got this one out, now we have three more. We're just gonna repeat, repeat those same few steps on these other fasteners. What also works really well is a trim panel tool here. Next, we'll be coming inside our wheel well area here, and we're gonna have two screws attaching the bumper here to the fender liner. So we're just going to use a Phillips head driver to remove those. Now I will say you are going to need a right angle adapter or a small tiny ratchet to get these out. You're probably not going to be able to fit a long screwdriver, at least for that bottom one there. So you will need to get kind of creative depending on what tools you have available. Now once we get the two horizontal ones out, there's actually a vertical one going into the bottom of the bumper fascia into the quarter panel. And then once we get these three out on this side, we're just gonna repeat these same few steps over on the other side. Next, we're gonna be taking a five millimeter Allen key and inside the hatch area here, we're gonna be removing these two screws, one on either side. Now this next step isn't required, but if you have a newer vehicle, I definitely recommend taking some painter's tape and at the very least lining the edge of the quarter panel here where it meets up to the bumper. That way you're not damaging the clear coat there, getting the bumper on and off. Now it also helps if your vehicle is clean because the more dirt there is on there, the more chance for scratches there's going to be. Now when we begin removing our bumper, we want to make sure that we have a nice place to set this. Um, usually a lot of people like to actually use the box that their hitch came in to protect the bumper, just somewhere we can put it where it's not going to get damaged. But we're going to take one hand here, we're going to grab inside the bumper here and you're just going to pull out releasing the clips along the way. This one here is pretty loose. It's not taking a lot of force there to release those. Some of those can be pretty tight. So pretty lucky here, but I've got this side pretty much broken free. We're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then it's a good idea to have an extra set of hands nearby to help you 
pretty much just take the bumper off there because the more people you have on it, the less chance there is going to be for damage. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. My end's off. Flex on this side a little bit. Good. Next, we're gonna be removing our bumper beam here. So on either side, we're gonna have four bolts holding it to the body of the vehicle. We will remove each of those with a 12 millimeter socket. And then when we're done, we're actually gonna be discarding these bolts because we are gonna have some aftermarket bolts that come in your kit we'll be using, but our bumper beam will be reinstalled. So go ahead and hang on to that. So now that we have all of our hardware off, we'll go ahead and remove the bumper beam. You do have to kind of lift up to release the keepers on either side. And as we said, we'll go ahead and set this aside because we will be reinstalling it. Now we're going to take a hammer or a rubber mallet and you can kind of see this portion that sticks out a little bit from the body of the vehicle. This is actually what our bumper hooked onto. We actually need to flatten that so it doesn't take a lot of force. Just go ahead and recess that inside the body of the vehicle on both sides. So now we're ready to install the hitch on the vehicle, but before we do that, we want to take our bumper beam and we're going to be sandwiching this over the flange on our hitch. And then we're going to get an extra set of hands to help us lift the hitch and the bumper beam onto the vehicle and secure it using the hardware provided with your hitch. We're going to have four of these on either side. So we've got one of our bolts in place on either side holding up the hitch in the bumper beam. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install the rest of our hardware. Now something I recommend, get a 13 millimeter socket and use that to thread in these bolts because there is some resistance on them and you don't want to cross thread. So I'm just going to use the socket there to thread in the rest of our bolts here before we tighten them down. Now before we torque our fasteners down, I'm just going to snug them up with my impact here. And it's again going to be the same 13 millimeter socket we just used. Also, I would like to say is I like to draw it down evenly. So I'll do one on this side. I'll go to the other side, do the other one in the same location, and then repeat that process for the rest of our fasteners. Now we'll come back with our torque wrench here and torque everything down to the specifications listed in your instructions. Now keep in mind, there isn't a lot of a torque applied to these bolts here. There doesn't need to be. You don't want to do too much because you'll strip out the threads, but you don't want to be too little because then the hitch might fall off. That's why it's important to use a torque wrench for this step here. And if you don't have one, you can actually rent this for free from most local auto parts stores. Now the next thing we're going to be doing before we reinstall the bumper is I'm actually going to be removing these black plastic end caps from either side. And the reason I do this is a lot of the times I've found that these actually put unnecessary pressure on the back side of the bumper. So we're adding extra thickness to our bumper beam here with that hitch and therefore you're not going to have as much clearance as before. So this isn't required. You guys don't have to do this, but I don't like pushing on the back of the bumper there, which is why I chose to remove these. So in your instructions, it does call out to trim a small section of the plastic off the bottom of the bumper there to allow for clearance of our receiver tube. But I've actually done this hitch a couple times on this vehicle and it's not necessary. It is going to push up a little bit on that plastic, but that's not going to cause any harm whatsoever. So we're again choosing not to cut because I don't like to modify the vehicle if we don't have to. But you guys are welcome to do this following the instructions at home by yourself. Now all that's left to do is just simply reinstall the bumper on our vehicle in the reverse order that we removed it. So this is what I meant by that small crease in the bottom of the rear bumper fascia there because we opted not to trim. Again, you guys are more than welcome to trim there, but that little small crease there isn't going to cause any issues with our vehicle. But now that we've got the bumper back on, that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the draw tight trailer hitch receiver here on a 2022 Honda Accord.